Welcome back to another Wonderwoods video. I am in the White Oak Isle where I spend a lot of time talking to people about quarter sawn lumber. I have a white oak out in the parking lot that I've been wanting to cut for a long time. It's a really nice looking big white oak log and I'm going to be quarter sawing it and since I spend so much time talking to people about quarter sawn lumber why to have quarter sawn lumber, why to use it, how to make it, talk about how it comes out of the log, etc. I decided it was a perfect log to show actually becoming quarter sawn lumber. It is a little bit too big to just put on the sawmill and start cutting. So I am going to, in this first video, spend the time to show you how I cut it with a chainsaw to get it ready to go into the sawmill. This happens a lot with me in particular because the logs I'm attracted to, the ones that I find, the ones that I go out of my way to get are extra big. So a lot of times they don't fit on the sawmill. This log's about 30 inches in diameter, which it, that means on the skinny end. So on the fat end, it's more like 36, 38. And it's common for me to get logs that are 48 inches in diameter, 50 inches, something like that. So those are just massive logs that are just really hard to handle. Sometimes the quarters, when I get them quartered, they are maxing out the sawmill. So I am going to start off by cutting the log in half with a chainsaw and showing all that. And then the next video, the second video, showing how I take those halves and produce actual quarter sawn lumber. I'm on the skinny end of this white oak log, which I need to split with my chainsaw. It's too big to fit on the sawmill, so I'm going to split it by hand with the chainsaw, and I'm going to cut into quarters, but when I do that, I cut them a little bit off center so that I'm not running the chainsaw through the middle of the log and put a chainsaw cut in the best two boards, which are going to be right here along the center. So you got the center line here, and what I do is I just put a plumb line on there so it'll be easy for me to rip. Um, just because the gravity will hold me straight up and down. So I get a plumb line on there, like that. Same thing down here. And then I'll go square off of that. bit lower same thing over here and that's those are the quarters okay but the very best quarter saw on boards are right here and if I freehand it with a chainsaw of course I'm not gonna have a perfectly straight cut and those boards are gonna be wrecked and I gotta trim a bunch of it off to get the board back to straight so I don't want to do that. So what I've come up with is that when I do this, I cut about three inches over of center line. Do the same thing on this end, same thing on that end. So when I rip this in half, I'll still have my best boards here intact. It doesn't hurt anything here because these boards, most of this is trash anyways over here and I'm not wasting any wood. So I'll just mark this three inches over basically right here for the top. I'll do the same thing at the other end. I'm going to connect those two cuts, come straight down. I forgot to put a line right here. When 
ripping the log down, make sure to leave a little bit at the end so that when you're working in the middle, the log won't fall apart on you. This way you can finish at the end and then hopefully when it falls apart, you won't be underneath it. Been hitting the wedges in there and it's almost open. So it's time for a bigger stick. And maybe a chainsaw. This part right here is the part that I obviously didn't make it to. The chainsaw was coming in from here. Didn't quite get this part, that's what was holding me up. But I'm gonna be edging most of that off anyways. And it's gonna be cut off when I cut a piece of lumber. So, looks really good. I've got the logs cut in half and set up here off the ground up on some blocks. And I took the time to level them out a bit just to, it makes it easier when I'm going to cut these. I'm gonna generally, when I'm holding the chainsaw, kind of wanna be plumb. And if I got these level, it just makes it easier. It just naturally goes to plumb. So, there's two options when I'm cutting these into quarters. And again, that is to cut right down the middle. But I don't wanna do that because I'll be putting a chainsaw right in the middle of the log. The next option, is to do what I did here in the center cut, to cut a little bit off center. So I'm putting a cut in the worst pieces, not the worst, but the worst in the middle. And then the third option, which is what I'm gonna do on these, is to simply get these square on one side. Because these, I'm gonna get boards out to a certain point on the, on the edge this is going to be waste anyways i can cut this piece in my sawmill if it's flipped up but it's hard to it's hard to get it in the mill to cut it it's hard to get it to stay straight and i got to spend some time trying to get it lined up in the mill so if i take some time right now with the chainsaw to kind of lay it out by hand go ahead and cut this off one side i'll have a nice straight square and it's going to be straight to the middle of the log so that I can put it in the sawmill and just start cutting, it'll be really easy. Because this is pretty consistent. This side over here gets really wide. And I'm not sure how that's gonna mill. I'll know once I cut it and put it on the sawmill. So I'm gonna cut this at 13 from this edge, or from the center. This right here, this little flat straight edge, will be the perfect amount to set this thing up in the sawmill. I'll put it in the sawmill like this, it'll be sitting on this, and then I'll be able to cut through. So on this one, I'm gonna come in probably at about 11 from the center. about there.
This piece also will sit on this flat face when I put in the sawmill to start cutting. And there's about 8 to 10 inches wide on this side, so it should stand up nice in there. Next stop is the sawmill. 